that between the music and the Italian wedding, because there's nothing like an Italian wedding, again, felt right at home. Um, uh, well, everything good. from what they were saying to how they were saying it, it was just right on the mark. And I needed to tell you, it was like it made me feel instantly comfortable and instantly at home watching your... Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I lived... I grew up in it. I married into it. What I what I didn't want to do was feel like we were overdoing it. And, you know, I'm in L.A. now. Yeah. But while we were writing the script, I would go back east when there was a wedding I had to go to or whatever. And I would sit in the wedding for about three or four hours. And then I would call my writer friend and say, we're not overdoing it. Trust me. We're, <laughs> we're, we're not doing enough, if anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's it's what I like about it too is is it the Italianness of it, for lack of a better way of putting it, it felt like a character, and it felt like it was really important for the story that we that we felt that Italianness because large emotions, huge emotions, when you love somebody, you love them, and when you hate them, you hate them, and when you are devoted to them and protective of them, um, it's really big, especially when it's your family, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, well. You know, it's funny. Um, when we wrote the script, I gave it to my agent. And in uh, one of the f first scenes where the parents are meeting the girlfriend for the first time in the outside the gym. Yeah. And then they invite she the mother invites her to dinner. She says, come uh, dinner. And she goes, OK, I'll come. And she jumps on the boyfriend's back and she walks out the door and the mother and father are watching her, and the mother goes, do not effing like her, right? <laughs> and my agent saw that uh, a scene, read that scene, and he said, that doesn't make sense. Why Why would she say she doesn't like her? She's just met her. And, it and I told him, well, you, you've never met an Italian mother then. Of course, no, there's no girl that she's is good enough for her son, you know? That's the big thing. It's the mother-son thing. Yes, and that's true. And by, by the way, that's true for uh, probably a lot of mothers, uh, not only Italian mothers, of course. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It was it was just so beautifully done. You know, first of all, where did the idea even come from to do this story? Well, the story, the beginning of the story came from uh, my own experience with my son, who was the star basketball player in high school. And when he after the last game i knew he wasn't going to play in college yeah and i knew this was the last game actually it was the same thing if they won it would have been extended into the playoffs they lost and we were on the floor we were hugging the coach saying goodbye and i got very emotional and it surprised me yeah. And I, I, I realized this is all coming to an end. And I was going to miss it. I was going to miss my son playing. I was going to miss, if I'm being honest, I was going to miss also me being the father of the star player who, and getting that attention. Yeah. And, and that was the idea for the story was let's... I knew I was going to write about the world, about that universe, yeah. the Italian-American working class. And... and now, this is a good story to tell this father who that's all he has. He's, he feels very small and very insignificant. And, but when he's the father of the, of, of the star basketball player, he's somebody all of a sudden. And yeah. let's start from there. And that was the germ of the story. And then, and then we just you know grew, grew around it. Again, I feel like it's... A realistic thing that a father would do to help his son move forward yes. for a length for his life it's a lifetime thing it's a dual thing he's doing he's doing the right thing a father would do because he wants him to to, to maybe uh, uh, have a future outside of the family business and he wants him to go to school but he's also guilty of wanting it for a little bit for himself so he can argue um, I, I, I'm getting him into college and I'm getting him a future, but the the wife's not lying when she says you're doing it for yourself also, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can absolutely, absolutely be both ways. Yeah. Um, have you, did you talk to your son as you were writing this? 
um, to see how he felt about things along the way, since it is somewhat of a, a personal thing that you did go through with him. I didn't really need to talk about that because I didn't, I didn't ask his girlfriend to to go back out <laughs> with him. But the funny thing is, when I when I've done stand up, yeah, and I've talked about my sons and I've made told funny stories about them, I I I, I run that by them, and. It's funny because they, they want to be part of it. Even if they're the brunt of the joke, they yeah. want to. They want to be in it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one I felt was uh, uh, my emotion was real there, and after that it was, it was this fictional character. So I, I didn't think it was necessary to, to run that by my son. My son was in the movie. The the basketball player, the kid, who's standing on the street, and he's the human pencil. Yes. He, that's that's my son. That's the basketball player. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I actually made a note of that, wondering if that was him. Yeah, cause because he sounds he sounds like me also a little bit. Yeah, that's, he has that's... he has one line. It's she says, "What's your name?" and he goes, "Wally," and <laughs> and when we heard him say Wally, my 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 writing partner said, "We may have to dub that in because people are going to think it's your voice." You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. This is your first movie you've directed. Any. Yes. Were there nerves, fears, excitement, all of the above as you went into it? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Box E, all of the above. <laughs> um, there were too many nerves. There was, uh, I was not planning on directing it. I was talked into it by my agent, uh, who, you know, rightfully so, he told me, you know, this is a personal story. This is a story you know every inch of it. Why would you let someone else put it in someone else's hands? And my thought was because they're a director and I'm not. And he said, you've been around it. You know, you know, I created a show. I created uh, everybody. I'm uh, not everybody was writing, but the show after that, Men of a Certain Age, which was a single camera show, which is like making a film every week. I didn't mm -hmm. direct them, but I was running the show with my co-creator. I've been in the edit room. I've been everywhere. He said, you know, get yourself a good cinematographer and a, and a good AD, and then you can concentrate on getting the story you want and the performance you want. And I agreed. And then I hated him for making me agree because <laughs> it became so stressful leading up to it. I was dreading now being a director and having to tell actors, veteran actors, and first time director, I mean, that scared the hell out of me. Um, you know, I, I, I wanted, I knew what I liked it to look like. I didn't technically know how to get it, so I have to have a cinematographer who understands. How am I gonna find that guy? But once we started doing it, that all went away, and then it was about we're in it now. Let's let's get the best thing we can get. And the actors were great with me. Mm -hmm. None of them, you know, had a problem with a first-time director, and they were on the uh, just the opposite. They were collaborative and open to everything. And it ended up being exciting, you know. After yeah. after, after the nerves and the stress, it ended up being something I would do again. Well, and the thing is after the fact, it's all done. First of all, you are getting very excellent reviews. Of so, the ones I've, I mean, so I've far. Seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good start, let's put it that way. Yeah, good start. As Ray the director, how difficult was it for you to direct Ray the actor, and vice versa? Oh, he's, an, a, he's an asshole, Ray the actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, logistically, it's a little weird, and technically... You know, you've got to, you've got a big scene, and you've got to get it technically set and right, and then you've got to forget about that, and just be in the moment. And you know, I got some advice from somebody um, who said, who had done the same thing, and they said, just you have to have someone you trust on that set with you. Mm -hmm. And I had that person in my co-writer, Mark Stegman. He had also lived every moment of this writing of it. 
and we knew every inch of every character and and our and our vision for it and he watched he would wa I would give it up and I would be the actor then and then when they yelled cut I would come over and he would co-direct me you know uh, and and he was not afraid to tell me eh, yeah, you better do it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so that was good. It was good. You, I think, I mean, I don't know, but I think you have to have that person there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One last thing I just want to throw at you. This yeah. is a personal thing, which is it's my goal in 2023 to be able to sing Chela Luna as well as you guys did uh, on uh, Everybody Loves Raymond that year. I want to know all the Italian words. You guys, do you remember that? That's yeah. a long time ago, and I had to I had to practice that for a while. If it's, my, it's a doozy. If my wife was here, she could do it. My wife speaks uh, Sicilian Italian, but but yeah. uh, she could do it. But I know, you know, and then it gets and a little. It. Then it gets hard. <laughs> <laughs> and 